Hey everyone, welcome back. Today bringing you round 10 of the Monster Energy Supercross. This week we're heading to Daytona, but before we get into the nuts and bolts of Daytona, I'd like to just take a step back, talk about round 9 at Atlanta and everything that happened there. So last weekend was a 250 East and West showdown, and I uh, always look forward to those battles because it's really cool to see those guys come together and see who the best in the business is, no matter if you're East or West. So starting off with Adam Cincerelli, your winner, put it all together. Fantastic run. I knew without a shadow of a doubt if he put it all together and had a solid night where no bad gate starts or anything like that happened to him. I really felt like he was going to win, and uh, he did just that, and uh, really fantastic, fantastic run on his part. He's always been solid in my mind. I know that he's been running up front with those guys forever, and uh, in my mind, out of both the East and West showdown, um, both East and West riders, he really is the guy to watch for. I feel like he's the fastest in both classes um, for East and West, no matter what. And so it was really cool to see him go against the East guys and really show all those guys that he's the guy to beat when they go to Las Vegas and compete there for the for their second East and West showdown. So I thought that that was awesome that Adam pulled out the win and that he really showed those guys what it was all about and uh, proof to proof to everyone that he is the fastest rider no matter if you're on the East or West series. So that was really cool in my mind to see that. Dylan Fernandez, your second runner-up guy, um, I said last weekend that he was going to have a solid night. He did he did just that, back that up like I said he would. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool to, to see that. But it was really cool in my mind to see another West guy get up on on the podium and have, um, you know, be like a one-two type of a situation um, and just going from there. So Dylan had a very solid night. I think the weeks off really helped him prepare for this past weekend. And uh, he really showed those guys also what he's made of and really proved to a lot of people that he can be running up there no matter if you're in the, the East or the West division. So I thought that that was pretty awesome. Now, um, Austin Forkner, he got third, and that's a little bit surprising on my part, depending on um, and really seeing that, you know, he's been first place every single every single round in the East Division, and he's been really kicking butt. And uh, even I think in his heat race, I'm pretty sure he won his uh, he won that um, this past weekend in Atlanta. So seeing him coming in third was a little bit of a surpriser. I thought maybe he would get first or second, depending on some different stuff that may or may not have happened with the track condition and whatever. The sand section definitely played a big um, part in that, and uh, definitely the crazy, crazy whoops. I mean, those guys, um, they were very steep and uh, very big. So I think that really plagued some guys. And I think Austin, to some degree, had that as well. I think the whoops really um, kind of threw him off of what he normally rides and how fast he rides. So I think third place uh, for that after the big whoops and the sand sections and everything like that really helped him out. So, um, you know, I can't really say too much about Austin other than he put in a solid performance. Would have liked to have seen him do a little bit better than what he actually did. But, you know, sometimes uh, consistency and really thinking about the championship points is, is better than pulling out the win and kind of risking it and maybe getting hurt and getting yourself out of the, the series for the rest of the year. So uh, he had a solid night, um, but, you know, would have liked to see a little bit more out of him. But this also brings up a good question going off of Austin Forkner. So you had – Two guys from the West getting on the podium and one from the East. So a question that I always say, you know, kind of say in my mind, and maybe I'd like to hear some responses from you guys, leave it in the comments, but is the 250 West, do they have better riders and more competition and, and harder competition than the 250 East guys? Me personally, I think that the 250 West guys have a lot more challenging components, uh, competition, you name it. I feel like uh, if you really want to prove what you've got, I feel like 250 West is definitely a little bit harder than 250 East. So um, I think that was proven this past weekend with having two of the West guys up there and only one of the East guys. And for Austin Forkner, for him getting first place every single week up until this round, and now getting third compared to both both of the, uh, the 250 West guys, I really think that proves a point that the 250 West guys are the better of the two um, when it comes to East versus West. But please leave a comment down below if you'd like me to talk any more about that, kind of your feelings about that as well. And I'd uh, just love to hear some comments on that. But moving on to the 450s, um, Webb, I mean, you got to ride that Webb wagon. It's crazy. He's been on fire. This is his fifth win. And um, just crazy. I mean, we're going in around 10 and 
He's gotten, you know, five wins now. So he's really on a, on a train. He's super on fire. And, um, you know, I said last week that I was still kind of skeptical about him, just with him being his rookie season with KTM and uh, him trying to work out some bugs with that team. But <laughs> at this point, I don't really see why I would need to be skeptical about him anymore. He's been super on fire, and um, it would be really stupid for me not to think that he can um, – you know, perform at a top level and get on that podium every single week. So um, I think a big part of, of that too is with his his mechanic, Carlo, Carlos Rivera, um, I feel like he definitely helps a lot with uh, all of that. I mean, coming off of Ryan Dungey, I think Carlos learned a lot from, from Ryan and, and how to set up the bike and everything like that. Carlos is an awesome guy, um, but I really feel like he definitely helped you know, Ryan be what he was. I mean, obviously the rider does a whole bunch of stuff and, and he and the rider in itself is a reason why I do so good. I mean, you know, you can set the bike to the best of your abilities, but at the end of the day, the rider has to do the job and whatever. But I feel like Carlos definitely plays a big part in Cooper's success this past year or this year. And uh, I think you're going to see more of that going on from here on out. So I think that having that mechanic for Cooper is really, really important and, and him just really doing well this season. But again, another question comes up in my mind. Does Webb have enough steam and momentum to really hold that red plate into Las Vegas and get that championship? Now, he's 13 points ahead of Roxon right now, and that's a definitely a bigger gap. I think this past weekend he was like eight points away from um from Roxon leading. So he's definitely bridging that gap with Roxon getting fourth again this past weekend. I think it's been helping Cooper as far as the point standings go. So it's been super interesting to see. Uh, I kind of maybe thought Roxon would have had a better night than what he did getting fourth, and that might have closed the uh, points gap up just a little bit, but it didn't. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things you, you can assume stuff and, and really think about, well, if Roxon gets this and Webb gets this, then maybe the points will be a little bit different. But at the end of the day, um, you know, the riders have to do what they have to do and, um, you know, move on from there. So it's really cool to see Webb on such a high right now and really going on. And uh, we'll see what he can do in Daytona here. But moving on, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about Daytona in a little bit. But Baggett getting second, I thought that was pretty cool. Another KTM rider, and uh, he's been very solid this year getting, you know, fifths and, and you know, being right there in the top five every single Weekend he won uh, a few, I think like three or four weeks ago. And so he's been really there this year. And I think that if he can stay consistent and really go for it, um, I think that you may see him in the top three for points at the end of the year. I wouldn't doubt that. He's had a really good good ride this year. And I think he's been just on fire. Um, all his training and everything has been really helping him out. So I would look for him for the rest of the season and see if he can carry his momentum and everything like that throughout the rest of the season. Now, Muskan, rounding out your, your third place on the podium. That's a KTM sweep. Super cool to see that KTM swept the whole entire night. So Muskan getting third. I think he put in a solid, solid run. I think him and, and uh, his teammate with uh, being Webb, you know, I think that bothers you know, Muskan a little bit to some degree just with seeing Webb come come in on his rookie year and, and kind of smoke Marv a little bit. But, you know, I think he had a solid night. Like I said last week, he's still battling with that knee injury a little bit. So um, I think that has something to do with it. But, I mean, solid night. I can't say anything about Marvin. Um, super, super good night. And um, I would – watch Muskan too for the rest of the year and really see how how he progresses and hopefully he can stay consistent with that knee injury and really see what see what happens there. Lots to look forward to this weekend. Going to be fun down in Daytona, Florida for your round 10. Ricky Carmichael does a very good job every single year of designing the track and making it unique for the riders, but also fun for the fans to watch as well. So I think that this week is definitely a week to watch for because the way that Ricky designs a track definitely helps certain riders rise to the occasion that normally you wouldn't consider being in the top three to top five. Last year is a perfect example. Justin Brayton taking home the first place winning your 450 class. Justin's always a 
solid rider, but he's a guy that personally to me, I've never really seen him as a top five, top three rider every single week. Just doesn't have the consistency there. But last last year, taking home the win in Daytona. So always, always really cool to see the way that Ricky designs it and how certain riders kind of attack it and really uh, use it to their advantage or disadvantage, depending on if they like or dislike the track. So Justin Brayton, a perfect example of last year, rising to the occasion, making sure that he could take home that win and really doing a solid job of that last year. So the question that I have this year is, is that will we see another shakeup? I don't know. I mean, Webb is super on just on fire. There's no doubt about that. So I don't know about Webb. I know last year he got third there. So, and he was still back on the Yamaha back then. And, you know, he had a decent ride and whatever then, but I think just with him being on fire, I think it's hard to argue against Webb really doing well there. Um, so I really think that you're going to see Webb kind of pull out the first place there, no matter what, and um, just go for it there. So I'm going to start off with the 450s talking about what I think is going to happen, and then I'll move on to the 250s. So like I said, Daytona is always a uh, really interesting track. There's guys there that you know, normally don't sit in the top three, top five every single week. But the way that Ricky designs the track, you know, sometimes it can use that to their advantage for, you know, riders that kind of struggle on an average basis on different tracks, just on a normal, normal basis. So it's going to be tough to really figure out um, who's going to be in the top five and everything. But if I had to go off of last year's records and also just the stats thrown down this year and um, just kind of maybe throwing in that wild card here and there, I'm going to say for your top five this week, I'm going with Webb. Webb for first. I mean, Webb is just super on fire. There's nothing that you can argue against. Like I said earlier in the video, there's just he, the guy's on fire. And uh, until he proves me differently, I mean, you, you can't not hop on the web wagon at this point. Five wins down, you, you got nine nine rounds done. So out of those nine rounds, he's won five of them. So it's really hard to argue against him and, and the way he's been riding. So I'm saying Webb for first. I'm saying Tomac for second. Tomac um, historically has been very good at Daytona. And uh, he's just a guy that you always watch for. And I think that this week he'll pull out a second place right behind Webb. And he'll really um, do well there. Roxon for third. I'm saying Roxon for third just because he is also another consistent rider. I think he's got that fire in him after the past two weekends getting fourth. I think he wants to get back up on that podium and, and hopefully try to protect some of the uh, points lead that Webb has. I think Roxon um, going into the season was my fan favorite trying to go for the championship and hold the red plate all year long. Now with Webb being the way that he is, Roxon's having a difficult time, um, you know, really making sure that he can keep that points lead intact. So I think this weekend he's got a little bit more fire underneath him after coming in fourth for the past two weekends for him to really go and do well there so he can kind of protect that points lead and kind of maybe close in a little bit on Webb. So down the down the line, I mean, we're in round 10 now and we got 17 rounds. So I think that if he can kind of make up some some points now, it might help him down the down the road. So I'm saying Roxon for third, get him back on the podium, get him making some more points than he did in fourth place for the past two weekends, and hopefully, you know, making sure that he can close in that gap on Webb and uh, you never know what's going to happen at the end of the season. So that's what my top three are for the podium. Going on to fourth, I'm thinking Muskan for fourth and uh, Baggett for fifth. Muskan and Baggett, both very consistent. Like I said earlier, I mean, Baggett got second last week and Muskan got third. So I think that Daytona just being the way that it is with the shakeups and everything that happens, um, I think that those guys are going to be very consistent, but I don't think they're going to be in the top three. Now we'll see what happens. We're sitting here on uh, Tuesday afternoon and anything could really happen at this point. But for right now, I'm saying that Muskan gets fourth and Bay gets fifth for your top five there. So we'll see what happens there and really go on and uh, hopefully see some good racing there, maybe see some shakeups here and there. But I think that it's safe to say that Webb is definitely going to be on the podium no matter what. And if I had to put my money on it, he'd be in first place just with him having the season that he has and the stats and the wins and everything like that. I say you can't argue against that, and I say that you put him in first place um, for that. And I think everything else, Tomac, Roxon, Muskan, Baggett, I mean, those guys are all solid riders, and you're going to see them somewhere in the top five. But personally, I'm saying Webb, Tomac, Roxon, Muskan, Baggett for your top five. Now, moving on to your 250 podiums, um, we're going back east, obviously, again. So the west guys um, 
don't go back out till, till Seattle, I believe. So those guys are out of the equations for a little bit. So going back to the 250 East guys, I think you're going to see Forkner get first place again, rise to the occasion again. Now that the West guys are out of the picture, I think it's Forkner's battles to lose at this point. I think that he is going to stay consistent and really go on that um, go on that fire that he had up until last weekend in Atlanta and get back to that first place mentality like he's been running ever ever since this year started for the 250 East guys. So I say Forkner for first. I'm saying Jordan Smith for second. Now, Jordan Smith does have a wrist injury, but he's been riding very well all year round um, other than last weekend. Last weekend was rough, but, you know, it's hard to say when you when you battle with the West guys, you know, some of those um, positions that you get really kind of shake up a little bit. So that's kind of, I feel like, why he didn't have the performance of a night like he wanted and all of that because of the West guys coming in. So I'm saying Jordan gets a little redemption this weekend. I'm saying second for him. Even though he's battling a wrist injury, I'm saying second place for him. He's been solid all year round, and I really think that he'll be a good guy to watch for and probably take second this week. Now, third for the box, I'm saying Chase Sexton. Chase has been super, super good um, every single week, and it's hard to deny that. He has been a very top rider in the East Division, and I think you're going to see him pull out third. So those are my top three for this weekend for the 250 podiums. Now, again, it's Daytona. It's always an interesting race. I know the fans get really hyped up for it. I can't wait to watch it. It's going to be a good good night. I can't wait to see the track map that Ricky throws down this year and the way that the track shapes up. I think you're in for a really good night of racing at Daytona. It's going to be awesome to watch, and I can't wait to see the results. So I look forward to watching it this Saturday. If you guys have any comments, questions, anything like that about this week, Please leave them in the comments. I'd love to answer them. Anything you want me to talk about for the following week, for next week, uh, round 11 would be awesome. So I'm just going to leave it up to you guys to leave some comments. You know, want to make this a, a really interactive type of a vlog and uh, really throw it in your guys' court. What do you guys want me to talk about so you guys can come back week in and week out? But yeah, round 10 is going to be a great, great one, and I can't wait to watch it. And hopefully my predictions are right. Hopefully I'm giving you guys some good information. But until next week, guys, have a good rest of your week. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing Supercross this Saturday, March 9th, at Daytona International Speedway, and it's going to be a great one. Until next week, guys, have a great rest of your week, and we'll talk to you soon.